the law that governs the manifestation of supply. It is safe to say that all men are striving to fulfill the law of their being, but few have understood the law. The law is one of the most important things we can study because only as we come to understand it in proportion as we understand it, it can comply with its requirements and demonstrate our divine possibilities through it. We must begin to see the four-dimensional world within, with its innate capacity for all things. Everything is right here, all that ever was or ever could be, simply waiting to be brought forth into manifestation. We have right here within and all around us the substance ready for our appropriation. We begin to break bread by breaking the substance of mind everywhere abundantly provided. We have discovered that there is within us a life force that can be quickened into greater activity by thinking. Everyone has at some time demonstrated that he could overcome the negative condition of weakness by holding the thought of strength. Sometimes the strength follows the thought immediately. Sometimes the thought must be persistently held for days or weeks. In demonstrating the law of ever-present abundance, we should and do expect the same results. If the demonstration seems slow in coming, patience and persistence will win. That may be because the poverty consciousness has a tenacious hold and takes effort to get rid of. There is a law that governs manifestation of supply, and we may learn that law and apply it by mental determination and faith in logical sequences of spiritual realities. We have thought that the laws of God were mysterious and sacred, far removed from the ordinary individual, and that we had better try first to learn the laws of food, of medicine, of thousand other secondary things. A strict metaphysician looks on all these temporal laws as secondary to the one law of God. That one law, we are told, is to be written in our heart, our physical being. Then there is something within us that naturally responds to the law of God. If we accept that as true, that we know the one law by inner intelligence, and that all other laws are secondary to it, we are in a position to get results to demonstrate prosperity. In the natural world about us, we see that everything is governed by law. We are told that the whole animal kingdom is guided by instinct. Many theories have been advanced to explain instinct in terms of material thought. Some philosophers have stated that it is something handed down from one generation to the next, incorporated in cells. Whether this is true or not, there is every evidence that there is a law either in or around the cells that control their formation and duplicates the pattern. This is the law written in our physical being, which is not a figure of speech, but a recognized fact. We must look within for the law and not without. The laws we find in the outer are the secondary laws. The infinite creative mind has given to every one of us a key to the workings of this unfailing inner law. It is that everything we touch mentally or physically represents substance and that it is limited only by ourselves and our thought capacity. We cannot ask God for more substance, for the universe is full of it. We can and should ask for understanding to grasp it with our own mind, that is, for an increase in our capacity. Back of the substance is the substance idea, and man is related to the cause side of this idea through his oneness with God. You may think that you could live better and do more good if you had lots of money. Things would not be better if you had millions of dollars unless you also had the understanding to use it for the good of yourself and others. We must evolve with our possessions until we get the ability to handle them. The law is fulfilled. The supply unfolds at the same rate as the need or ability to use substance developed. We can realize this law of unfolding substance and fulfill it in ourselves by developing our understanding and appreciation of it. Infinite mind has a lawful way of providing supply. Nothing is left to chance. God feeds the birds of the air and clothes the lilies of the field, and he will feed and clothe us unless we make it impossible by our refusal to accept his bounty. The law is there in our physical beings in our very heart. We know what to do. We don't have to pray or beg for God to give us anything. All we need to do is to meditate quietly 
and affirm the presence and power of the greater giver of all. And then accept the gifts. To be true to the law is to stop looking to the without and to look within for supply. Looking to the within means fixing the mind on an ever-present spirit that is also substance and power. Wrapped up within each of us is a great richness of thoughts. These thoughts are prisoners in the subconsciousness only waiting to be set free and go to work for us. They are waiting for the coming of the Son of God who releases the prisoners and sets the captives free. This Son is now seeking expression in you. He is you. Release your rich thoughts, set free your innate powers, and take from the rich substance what you will. Through faith, the sense mind will be overcome and the spiritual mind brought into control of your life and affairs. The sense mind is filled with lacks and limitation. The spiritual mind knows only limitless abundance. You are linked with the universal spiritual mind. You are master with the master one with the all-providing substance, and that you already have prosperity. As you begin this process of unifying yourself consciously with the inner life and substance, it will begin to well up within you and to overflow into your affairs so that you will be prosperous. Remain true to this inner life no matter what the outer appearance may be, and you cannot help but bring the good things of life into manifestation. All manifest substance flows from a realm of light waves, according to the findings of modern physical science. James says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. This is an exact statement of scientific law, even to the use of the plural form of the word lights. For as science states, one or more light particles, electrons, form the atom that is the basis of all material manifestation. Except this is an absolute truth, an all-productive truth, and consciously connect your mind with higher mind. Then you will begin to realize a never-failing prosperity that comes from being itself. The German philosopher and poet Goethe says, The highest and most excellent thing in man is formless, and we should guard against giving it shape in anything less than noble dress. This is a recognition of the truth that man has the capacity within himself to give form to the formless substance. We are constantly incorporating ideas into our mind and giving them form and shape according to our loyalty to truth. Infinite mind has imaged all its attributes in the soul of every man, but man must develop this image into the clear picture and much of that work must be done in the dark with perfect faith in the law of manifestation. Our bodies and affairs are proof of the development of mental pictures, but floating in our mind are the higher ideas, the real image to be developed. Our mind is engaged more or less in a chemical process. It is hard to find a line of demarcation between physical and mental chemistry, for they follow the same law. However, what has been imagined can be brought out by the proper method of development. Whatever you image yourself as doing, you can do. In our human understanding, we have divorced this image power of the mind from the executive power. When imagination and will work together, all things are possible to man. The will is symbolized in scripture by the king. King Solomon was probably the world's richest man and, in so far as the world is concerned, He was a great success. He demonstrated prosperity. He did not ask God for riches. Let us note that carefully. He asked God for wisdom, for ideas. God is mind, and his gifts are not material but spiritual, not things but ideas. Solomon asked for and received the ideas and then developed them himself. Because he was wise and all the world came to his court seeking wisdom, and bringing riches in exchange for it, the king of Tyre brought the material he needed to build the temple. The queen of Sheba brought him great quantities of gold. From this we should get our cue. Ask God for rich ideas, and then put them into work in our life. Do not hesitate to use the divine ideas that come to you, but do not forget their source or foundation. There are many people who are very active executives. The moment they get an idea, they make use of it. But oftentimes, 
they do not get far because they forget the foundation on which such ideas rest and from which we must start to build. With the foundation of truth, of spiritual ideas and substance, we can build an enduring structure of prosperity. It will not be based on false premise. It will stand when the rain descend and the floods come and the winds blow. We do not desire prosperity today and poverty tomorrow. We should look for the steady, day-by-day -day realization of abundant supply. There is a way of law and a wisdom to apply the law, and there is an abundance of substance waiting to be formed by each of us into what we will when we apply that law. There is an inherent faculty that instinctively lays hold of what it calls its own. Even little children like to have their own toys and to keep them separate from those of the other children. This is nothing to be condemned, for it is the natural outworking of a divine law. It proves that we know, somewhere in our deepest being, that we have been provided for from the foundation of the world and are entitled to our own portion without question. The power of the mind to draw to us those things to which we are divinely entitled is a power that can be cultivated. We are now on the verge of a new state of mind in matters financial. Rid the erroneous idea that men must be poor to be righteous. Money is man's instrument, not his master. Money was made for man, not man for money. It is not money that controls men, but the ideas they have about money. Ideas of poverty are just as powerful to enslave men as are ideas of wealth. Every man should be taught how to handle ideas rather than money so that they serve him rather than have dominion over him. Eventually man will not have to wait for seed time and harvest when he learns to use the power of his mind. When we have the consciousness in which our ideas are tangible, all our demands will be quickly fulfilled by the higher law. Throw into your ideas all the life and power of your concentrated thought and they will be clothed with reality. There is a universal law of increase. It is not confined to bank accounts, but operates on every plane of manifestation. The conscious cooperation of man is necessary to the fullest results in the working of this law. You must use your talent, whatever it may be, in order to increase it. Have faith in the law. Do not reason too much, but move ahead in faith and boldness. If you let yourself think of any person or any outer condition as hindering your increase, this becomes a hindrance to you, for you have applied the law of increase to it. Fear of it may cause you to bury your talent, which defeats the law. Keep your eyes on the abundant inner reality, and do not let the outer appearance cause you to falter. Do not give too close in study of your present condition. To dwell in the mind upon seeming limitations only prolongs their stay and makes progress slow. Increase comes by the operation of a universal law and our part is to keep that law. 